Hello and welcome to the heated debate brought to you by Emirates. As always, every single match day, we are here talking about the biggest footballing topics at the World Cup, and you can get in touch as well. Make sure you use the hashtag the heated debate. Jump in the comments as well. We want you to tell us: Are we right? Are we wrong? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let us know your thoughts on that one today. Well, this is a great topic. There's been plenty of star names flying around around at the World Cup already, and we're talking about five players your club should sign when the tournament is done and to get into their brains to pick their star names we've got Zach Jalab and James Alcott guys we've had some great performances some standout individual performances as well James we've had plenty of star names already at the tournament too many yep. but we're going to try and whittle it down to five somehow yeah well so we've done a little bit of research yeah. as well in terms of some options we've tucked into a bit of uh, transfer gossip as well so I think that will help with this there's obviously loads of names that uh, we've got from Twitter as well which is which is huge but I think a World Cup always reveals some players and actually sometimes clubs kind of make mistakes but they get a little bit too excited about certain players and I think that's that's going to feature in, in some of our transfers as well. I'm not going to lie, I saw you in that shirt this <laughs> morning and I thought, wow, is this Spain's new uh, midfield general <laughs> right here to rival Pedri and Gavi? Fits the height. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's about it. I think yeah. that's where it stops, sadly. Right, Zach, let's talk about some of the names. Maybe that yes. have not even made the, the five that we've chosen because we've got Jude Bell him everyone's yeah, talking about yeah. him Jamal Musiala they're not in the list all right spoiler alert I'm sorry because I feel like they're ones that people will be talking about maybe in the future not just right yet. 100%. And maybe they're also like a, a little bit easy to talk about I mean Musiala is a guy that who to be honest I'll be shocked if he ever leaves Bayern Munich realistically unless he feels like he wants to to go and challenge himself in another league I think it'll be more on him wanting to leave rather than Bayern willing to sell him if anything sure. um, uh, as for Bellingham he's a guy that is going to probably move in the summer it feels it feels like it's going to be about 150 million that's going it's going to take to get his uh, signature it just depends on which of the like six clubs that can afford it are, are willing to do that in the summer and that could be a city it could be Real Madrid could be a Chelsea it could be yeah, Liverpool. Liverpool fans yeah. are really really keen on that. <laughs> yeah. especially and that also comes as well if Liverpool sort out their new ownership or whatever it happens there Manchester United are also looking uh, to get new investors too so so there could be a lot of money with be uh, willing to be spent at one of those two clubs as well so you think it'll be 150 million for Bellingham I think 150 million wow. is, uh, is where it is like What's really weird is like when Erling Haaland was at Dortmund um, and Jamie Sancho before, we all knew the, the release clause. It was public knowledge. And, and what's kind of maybe worrying slightly is it's not there doesn't seem to be public knowledge on what release clause, if he does have one, Jude Bellingham has. And so 150 million um, sounds like a lot. It is a lot. But I think for someone like Jude Bellingham, it's probably what's going to be needed. Right. Well, we already know that they're incredible players. Mm. So we're not going to wax lyrical anymore about them. Let's get into five players that your club should sign from this World Cup. Up, Zach, Ooh. who have we got? We're not ranking them as well, by the way. We're just putting these in any order. Indeed, so who yes. have we got first? Uh, I mean, we're starting big. We're starting <laughs> big. Uh, a free agent. Ronaldo. Oh, everyone's going to be talking about Indeed. where he signs next. Do you think that he's still worthy of a Champions League, a top six club in any league, Zach? Um, if I'm being brutally honest, and I was like a sporting director at a club, and, and I was like trying to, to be successful uh, at the top of the league, I probably wouldn't sign Ronaldo, realistically, because his wages are so much. Uh, having his time at, obviously, uh, Manchester United, he was on £500,000 plus a week, which is an incredible amount of money to be paying someone who is very much in the latter stages of his career. You might only get... Him in his interviews recently has said that he's only really planning to play till 40. I say only, 40 is, <laughs> yeah. is, is, is nuts. It's still got three years. Um, but still, that's a, that's a lot of time to be paying someone that amount of money who realistically might not be a good for your team. We saw this season with Eric Ten Hag, obviously a new kind of manager, progressive kind of manager, um, want something different uh, and, and want his strikers pressing and things like that. And with the way football is nowadays, pressing is a huge matter to, to what um, clubs want. And I just don't think Ronaldo probably fits into into any like any realistic top top five leagues, top five teams I disagree. Uh, system, personally. I disagree. I think it's right in front of you. I think it's your team. No, I think maybe, you can, maybe that's me being <laughs> brutally... I think it's your team. It's I Chelsea. Really I think he could work really, really well at Chelsea. Oh. If you think of uh, Bamiyang's there at the moment, and he's not really pressing for the team. If you get some, get those full-backs fit, Mount working in that 10 position, doing the, doing the running for him, my... Ronaldo could score a lot of goals. There is a curse at Chelsea with that number nine shirt. 
and I don't know if that one's available but in terms of strikers Chelsea have always struggled and I think sometimes because the pressure is a little bit too much this guy thrives under the pressure and I know people will be going hang on Jim you've gone you've gone after Ronaldo a lot and I have but for a team like Chelsea who don't I don't think they press that much I think he could come in talk about the wages the exposure that you get with Ronaldo is huge you could give him a, a short-term deal and I think I think he could do really well at Chelsea. I do. He's a guy who, I, with the way Chelsea are building their side, the way they look like they want to go forward, this young, like we, all the signings seem to be, uh, we made, well, I say, apart from Aubameyang, realistically, but most of the other signings seem to be young guys who, who, are, who have, are meant to have a long-term future under this Graham Potter, well, now Graham Potter um, Didn't Tom Bowley want Ronaldo, though? It wasn't so, that a big part yes, of all of yes, this? Yes, 100%, 100%. Originally, I think there was uh, talks between him and Tuchel saying, I, you know, what, what do you think of Cristiano Ronaldo? And Tuchel was like, no, uh, Tuchel's not there anymore, and, and maybe Potter might be slightly different. But I think with the way this side at Chelsea is being built, it just doesn't make sense for me to have someone like Ronaldo there when, when someone like maybe Brozier or, or, or an, another striker, a young striker, is the guy that you probably want to build your side around. He, he's, a, he's a fantastic striker. We've seen that throughout his career. Tell me a club. Who would sign him? If it's not Chelsea, who would you go for? Uh, James thinks Chelsea. Who do you think? Al Halal. Oh, wow. <laughs> pay, pay <laughs> the money. Huge, huge deal, possibly, money, yeah, possibly yeah, but the potentially money. there. Right, Ronaldo's the first one. Who have we got second then? We're only yes. picking five. And, I mean, we've had, as I keep on saying, plenty of individual performances that worthy of a move, Zach. Who have we got? Christian Pulisic. Um, Away from Chelsea? Yeah, I think it, it, that's... We saw in the summer Christian Pulisic was a player who was being rumoured to uh, be... Uh, to, to possibly go on loan to Manchester United. Weird, actually, how you've mentioned Ronaldo to Chelsea and, and, and Pulisic to United seems like the most um, likely one in this scenario. It's a really weird time, obviously, being a Chelsea fan, when Pulisic came in, He's had really bright moments. There was his hat tricks uh, or hat trick that he scored against Burnley. And you thought he was going to crack on. There was a time um, just after lockdown when football started again, and, and he he really really was electric and and he was fantastic in the FA Cup final against Arsenal. And then he got injured, and that's kind of been the story of Pulisic's career so far. Every time he kind of starts getting a bit of momentum, starts going on a good run, there's an injury there. One thing we did notice, um, I said actually against England at this World Cup, that's the best I've seen Pulisic play in, in a while. <laughs> Um, and, and if he can do performances like that, then I personally be saying, don't, don't get rid of him. But I just don't know whether that works in maybe the Chelsea system and, 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 and what is required. Does he need to be the star man in a team? Because in the USA, that's what everybody talks mm. about. At Chelsea, he's not. And I don't think that's his fault. He, he's not been in the squad as much and injuries and not been able to get that momentum at times as well. But James, do you think that he could go to a club and he could be that, that difference, that person that actually the ball... Everything just comes yeah. through him. I think I think Man United is the wrong move for me mm. personally. I think in terms of that area of the pitch, they have a few options there. You know, you've got Anthony, you've got Rashford can play wide, James Sancho can play wide. Anthony. So, yeah, I said Anthony. Oh, did you? I didn't even hear that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think there's only one Anthony. Uh, Garnacho as well. So yeah. I don't think you need Pulisic if you're Manchester United. For Pulisic, I think the, at 24 with all the hype that's been around him over the years, the next move is really, really important. Yeah. And ultimately, if you're playing for the best teams, you're, there's going to be competition there, so you better be good enough. And I think at Chelsea, there's, there's always been a lot of rotation. There's, they've had a lot of numbers in those positions as well. And he hasn't been able to have that consistency. I also think there's a, he has a problem in terms of composure, in terms of scoring goals. And for the top clubs, you, you need to have that output. And he doesn't totally have that. There's a lot of areas where Man United could strengthen. I don't think Pulisic would be the right move for Man United personally. The other thing as well, it depends on how much it will cost. Chelsea spent a decent chunk of change of him uh, on him to get him from Dortmund to Chelsea at such a young age. And his contract runs out uh, not at the end of this season, but the end of next season. So the summer coming is really where Chelsea can, can make their last bit of money if they want to try and get some money back on, on their investment on him. Um, and the other thing you mentioned, we kind of said about Ronaldo, it's not the same degree as Ronaldo, but signing Christian Pulisic brings in a huge American audience. And if right. you're looking to do that, um, then that's a, that's a positive. Oh, that's a, that's a plus. Right, so a club for Pulisic. Who, who I signs him? Personally, I'd like to see him go... I, I wouldn't mind to see him go back to Germany. Um, whether that may be a Dortmund, whether that may be a, a Bayern Munich if they were to go and sell one of their wingers, I don't think that would be a bad move. Um, and I think he'd thrive in the way that German football is played, how, how it is so um, counter-attacking at times, end-to-end, -end, he'd, uh, he'd be fantastic there. So one of those two I think would be brilliant. Yeah, I think it's interesting, you know, you say, it, even going back to Dortmund, there's been a few players that have kind of been at Dortmund, people think they're good, they get that move, yeah. the move doesn't work, then they kind of go back. Um, that could definitely work. I think it, that would be disappointing for him, I think, as a player. I, you know, AC Milan popped into my head. 
I just Ooh. wonder if going to like or Juventus going to Serie A might be a place that could work for him as well. Right, let's get our third pick then. Or QPR. Or QPR. <laughs> we, would you take him, James? Are you, are you I'm sure? Not sure we can afford him, but uh, <laughs> we would take him. Yeah, sure. Right, who have we got? Well, again, weirdly mentioning Borussia Dortmund, you said Makunko, um, who has been unreal uh, for for Dortmund this year. He was so young. He's someone who, for a long time. Uh, You've, you've heard of him at this Dortmund Academy and obviously British Dortmund are fantastically known for, for, their, um, for their youngsters. Uh, and he's someone that's come through. He's still incredibly young. He's only 18 years old. And really, the, the main reason I think we want to talk about him is because his contract ends at the end of this season. Um, he came on for Germany in their, their first game and, and made a bit of an impact. Obviously, they still they lost. They didn't make a, enough of an impact. But he's still so young. And he's someone that the fact that he's already in the German national team, um, at only 18 years old, has been on the radar really since he was 15 Who needs him years then? old. Ooh. That is I, I think a good question. He's very appetising, right? And, and what I mean by that is it might be one where you kind of bring him in and you can give him a year or so where he's not... It's not like it's Haaland and you better hit yeah. the ground running. He's, he's literally just turned 18. And I, I think the big question here, and I'd love to know what people think in the comments, is if you're Makuku, do you, do you just, if you're that talented, do you make the move, go to the big club and, and sort of get on your way to being this sort of superstar? Or do you stay at Dortmund for another couple of years, like, say, Bellingham has, yeah. Haaland did as well, and get, get those games in the bank? Sometimes it's like, Sometimes that player is just that good that it's okay for them to make that move. And I feel like he really is. I was chatting to Andy Brassel, who's a sort of European football expert, and he was saying that he's really going to arrive. He thinks that he should be arriving at this, this World Cup. He hasn't got the minutes that we were expecting, but he's starting to sort of fill into his body now. So yeah. you see, he has, has got a bit of size about him. He hasn't really filled out yet. But once that happens, which obviously it will do in the next couple of years, it makes it really appetising because it's like, why don't we get him now? whilst he's kind of cheaper and then you know let him sort of bloom at, at a Arsenal at a Chelsea yeah. at a whoever it may be I was going to say it's a shame it's almost as if, if he was at another club and Dortmund went in for him you'd be like the perfect place for him to go and grow he'll get minutes but because Dortmund also already have two other strikers there fighting for minutes he might be maybe possibly played out of position on maybe off a, off a flank trying to come in so in terms of his career I'd probably say do you want to buy Munich you think? feels obvious, right? Lewandowski's obviously yeah, gone. Yeah, things up top for them, Yeah, really. th that next guy, the successor who you have for 10 years, who's that amazing striker, like he's averaging about 19 touches a game, not, not that many touches. You know, he's a proper striker. And when he, when he scores goals, and I'm maybe showing my age here, the way he wallops the ball, it's like Robbie Fowler, like back <laughs> in the day, which I know doesn't maybe feel like the right kind of comparison. But in terms of those kind of strikers who go, well, no, I'm just going to wallop that in the top corner. He's got that about him. So Bayern Munich has always been that... It's always been that route between Dortmund yeah, and Dortmund, Bayern Munich. Yeah, sure. I could see it happening again. Right, let's get our fourth pick then. Another player yes. that someone's club should sign from this World Cup. Who have we got, Zach? Rabio. Interesting choice. Out of yeah. all, all the players that, in the French team, Rabiot? Oh, I'm a bit of... Um, I'm not necessarily Rabio's biggest fan, personally. I think throughout his career, he could have... When he was young, again, he was at PSG. There was also a time he was, he, for a year he was at Man City's Academy as well when he was very young. Uh, but when he was at PSG, he was, ne he was meant to be the next big thing. He was meant to be one of the best world, like one of the best midfielders coming up, and it was all expected that he'd get first team minutes, uh, and he did. But he never really, he never really pushed on. And then there was a lot of issues, kind of, with his agent and, and things like, uh, um, and maybe money side of things. His which, attitude as his well. His attitude, yeah, where, where it kind of. It kind of stopped him going into the potential that he had. Like, this is a guy previously that's been linked to Manchester United. It's been linked to a possible return to Man City at times. I've seen um, Arsenal. Arsenal, Chelsea. There have been many times he's been linked with big clubs. And in the end, he made his move to Juventus. Weird enough, who, paid him, who are paying him the most money. And I completely understand that kind of side of things. Your footballing career is very, very short. Make the most amount of money you can. Completely understandable. Um, however, again... He's another player whose contract runs out at the end of this season. And I would like to think if, if, if he wants to kind of go more for his, the footballing side of things, he makes a move where we can really start to see him blossom maybe towards the, the latter end of his career, as we haven't maybe seen that currently. This Juve side, he's not been amazing for. And the one thing that I will give him credit for 
is that he is always picked by Didier Deschamps in the French squad. Um, even when Arulio Chumeni was coming through, even when other youngsters are coming through, Rabiot's always been one of the guys that's been Mr. Consistent there. And so he's won a World Cup with Didier Deschamps. Like it's, it, it makes sense as to why he likes him. Maybe another club could also. If they're to win it again, how important, James, do you think Rabiot will be to this French team in, in keeping the trophy? Um, not that important. Oh, really? <laughs> no, honest, I think if I'm listing it, I'm, I'm putting Mbappe ahead of him. I'm putting, the, I'm putting Chumeni, Griezmann, Giroud, the goalkeeper. I'm putting no quite Pogba, a few no Kante, above him. though. Doesn't yeah, I hear what you're saying. And I, I think the, the Australia game is really good. Got a goal, got an assist. Um, and, he, and he was impressive in that game. I feel like there's something going on here, maybe, because the reason to put Rabio in there as well is that there's some, some talk in the press about yeah. him. I wonder, we're talking about uh, players who sometimes kind of have a couple of good games in the World Cup and there's an opportunity there. I wonder if Juventus might be sort of allowing some of these things to, allegedly, obviously I'm not, you know, there's so much talk when it comes to transfers, but I think Juventus, with the amount of um, midfielders that they've got, uh, Weston McKennie as well had a great game against yeah. England, but didn't play very well in the first game. There's been some stuff about him as well, and I wonder if Juventus would be quite keen to maybe offload one or two midfielders. Yeah. And if, you, if he's going to go in the summer, if you can get you know a few pennies for him, then Juventus would be quite happy with that. Um, but I, 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 that's why I thought it was an interesting one for him to talk uh, to talk about. But I, he'd be one, but I, that would be careful about. I don't think I don't think I, if I'm a top six team, I don't think I'd go for him. He was linked with Man United, and actually in terms of his numbers, Scott McTominay had the same numbers, if not better, in most yeah. metrics. So, yeah, be careful of him. Interesting, right there. Right, we have one more pick for our fifth and final player. I've seen so many yeah. people replying in, to the tweet right here about Gakpo, where he should be going. We know there was lots of interest. Manchester United, Leeds at one point, Southampton, Southampton yeah. as well. You think, Zach, this is the tournament that he needed just to actually yeah. secure that move? Yeah, I mentioned previously before the tournament started, there were several players who, if they have a good tournament, they could get a big money move in, in January. And, and saying, to be honest, saying Cody Gakpo wasn't really uh, that far of a stretch. He'd had an unbelievable season for PSV so far. PSV are playing incredible football. Um, but he's come alive for, for the Netherlands. He's done very, very well. Obviously, that first, that first game especially where he, um, he, uh, he, he scores a goal. The second game does very, very well as well. And so, um, yeah, for someone like Manchester United, which I feel sometimes it's a bit cheap consistently because when a transfer rumour comes up and it seems like a lot of money and it's a young, exciting player, Manchester United's name is always thrown into the mix. Um, however... He is a guy who operates off the left. You can maybe see a future where he becomes a nine and plays through the middle. And something that Manchester United definitely need is a forward that, is, that can play through the middle. Um, the other side of it is he just looks like he's got everything to his game. He's quick, he's good on the ball, uh, he's, got, uh, 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 he's good in the air, he's got a great strike on him, dribbling is fantastic. And so that is, uh, whenever you see that, I find as a player, he's always a very exciting one to watch. And you want him to kind of come to the Premier League so you can watch him week in, week out. Um, and obviously the big issue with Gakpo is the money and how much that's going to cost. And obviously he signed a new deal at the, the start of this year in January. And now that's going to cost even more, probably an extra 10 million with the way he's performing in the World Cup. And so when you look at that side of things as well, you then think, OK, Manchester United need a forward. They have a lot of money. What's going to happen though? maybe this January with the new owners? Are they going to be willing to spend if, they don't, if they're not going to be there for the long term future? So maybe it becomes a summer move or someone else jumps in into January. But um, he's someone... Personally, I'd probably see it at Manchester United, but I just don't know if it will happen. James, it feels like his next move is key and mm. crucial to his career and actually what he can go on to achieve. Yeah, and I think it, it's a no-brainer for me. It has to be Man United. I think Man United really need him. I think it would be a great move for him as well to go and work with Ten Hag. Yeah. He's also actually very good at sort of coming and getting on, on the ball as well. I think he's ready to really progress as a sort of central striker. And we were talking about with Pulisic as a sort of winger, which of course he can do that. I don't think you'd use him in that way. Man United need a striker. You know, Rashford has, has been doing it and, and has done really, really well. But you always wonder if he is truly that guy. And Ronaldo's gone. Uh, Martial is in and out of fitness or form. Gakpo, I think, it would be a wonderful, wonderful signing for Man United. But he's going to cost a lot. But Man United have a lot of money. So I think it will be... I'd be really surprised if we get to the end of January and Man United, uh, Gakpo's not a Man United player. Have we mentioned Manchester United for every single one of these players? Obviously, he will be... Well, he's left Manchester not, United. Not, not Kiko, Kiko. So, 
Uh, these are all five choices. Anyway, I'm sure there's plenty of other picks that you guys would be looking at. And you can do that. Drop us a comment. Five choices and five players from this World Cup that you want your club to sign when the tournament is done. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let us know in those comments. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe as well. And we want to hear from you in that comment section. We are back every single match day on the Heated Debate brought to you by Emirates. Talking about the biggest football topics that are here at the World Cup. And we will see you tomorrow.